Hi, this is Slade, and welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, this is going to be a different kind of video. Um, I did write a script for this, but I decided in the end that I want to actually just kind of freestyle and improvise this video a bit. Uh, I think it will just kind of go better with uh, with my, my thoughts and, and what I want to get across. So hopefully it goes well. I don't know. I've never done this before. We'll see. So recently Smash Ultimate got its final DLC character, Sora. And that means that Smash speculation has essentially come to an end. No one's really going to be talking about what characters they want in the game, who they think's coming next, because, I mean, there kind of isn't any game left to have a new character in. Um, and for the most part, I'm content to let it die as well, because, let's be honest, it hasn't exactly been the most uh, positive uh, experience. I mean, I personally enjoyed it for the most part, but not everyone has. It's, it's, it's had a lot of what some would say is toxicity. Um, but I'm not quite ready to let go of it yet. I have, um, for quite a while, been fascinated with the idea of what comes after Ultimate. Ultimate is, in a lot of ways, the... Well, it, it's in the name. It's the Ultimate Smash Brothers game. Um, and the question really is, what? how can you follow up on the Ultimate? The game that is literally called Ultimate. How do you follow that up? It seems like an impossible task. I don't envy anyone who has to make that decision. And I don't think a lot of people really appreciate just how far that's going to have to go. Because of that, I have decided that I wanted to actually put myself in those shoes. Uh, the, the, the very large, I mean, I don't know how big his feet are, but the very large, shall we say, shoes of Masahiro Sakurai. Um, and think about what his task will be when he, when he comes to the next game. I think it is fairly well accepted by most of the community. Not all, I have definitely seen a little bit of, um, shall I say, wishful thinking. But I think it is definitely accepted by most of the community that Ultima is going to be, well, it's going to be a one-time thing, essentially. We will never get a game like Ultima ever again with the roster that Ultima has. Um, Sakurai himself has kind of confirmed that. He confirmed it before even the game had fully released. Um... And so it really does it really does beg the question of how that roster is going to be cut down because there has to be a cut somewhere along the lines it has to be cut down there's no way that we can't lose characters but how how do you manage to cut the roster that is ultimate down to a reasonable level whilst also maintaining um, plenty of space for new characters as well how do you manage to still represent the important things that need to be represented in Smash while also slashing the character roster pretty significantly? Um, and you'll see how significantly I have cut it down. Um, so my task was to try and predict what the next Smash game's roster will be. Um, and this I am considering a hard prediction. There is a, a certain element of certain things I personally believe should be in Smash, uh, certain standards I believe should be maintained. There, there is a certain element of that, but it's it's mostly, those are mostly things I still think will, I still actually personally think Sakurai will do. It's not just about, oh, this is what I want, that's what I'm going to put in here. A lot of this is what I think will happen rather than what I want. And this will become evident with at least probably one of the characters I've cut, um, and I'll explain that later. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a hard prediction. There are quite a few different um, things that I wanted to keep to, certain, as I say, standards, but also, I guess you could say rules I wanted, I wanted to stick to. Um, as well as um, certain, I guess, categories that I, I will have dropped, essentially. Uh, categories of characters. Um, some obvious, some a little more controversial. Again, this is a prediction, so 
this isn't what I want. I want to make that clear. This isn't necessarily what I want. It's just what I personally believe we're going to see. Um, and I also want to kind of um, make it clear that I don't... Even though this is my prediction and it's what I think we'll see, I'm also very, uh, very aware that I am almost certainly going to be completely wrong. We can't predict that far ahead. I wanted to make this prediction at the earliest possible uh, possible time, the earliest possible moment that you can make a prediction on the game. Uh, and that's after the last game is finished. I, I wanted to have this um, as something that I can look back at maybe when we get a new Smash game announced or, or when we know the roster of the next Smash game and see how close was I able to get it. So I know that a lot of people are really not liking the idea that people are speculating about Smash 6, and I get that. Um, however, this, the only reason I'm doing this is because I literally can't do this at any point other than now. If I do it later, it really doesn't stick with the spirit of, you know, predicting it based on entirely on what we know when the last Smash game has finished. So. Yeah, I know that some people might get annoyed at the fact that I'm speculating about the next Smash game. Don't just you know let the game get let the game go out gracefully and all that. I, I get that, but also I I think that this is a really interesting thing to do. I think it's got, and I think it, especially when the next Smash game comes out, it will be very interesting uh, to look back on. I think that's about all I really need for the intro. So I'll just launch into the the, the actual roster. Um, I'm going to go series by series. This is how I've I've actually done a visual representation of this roster, as if it was in a character select screen, um, and I've sorted it by series. Um, and you'll kind of sort of see what the order, why I've done the order I've done. Um, but I I want to kind of go through this in the same order that I've got them on this character select screen. I think it kind of makes sense the way that I've ordered it. Uh, so, surprise, surprise, the first series I'm going to talk about is the Mario series. Um, I'm going to also talk about the Mario sub-series, so Yoshi, Wario and Donkey Kong as well. Um, I'm going to talk about those in a minute, but I'm going to focus for now on the main series Mario games. Uh, now, this was actually quite easy to, um, to come up with who I think should or, or not even should but will return because let's be honest we know the four characters that absolutely have to return mario luigi peach and bowser they're not going anywhere they are not just the most iconic mario characters ever they are probably among probably the, the maybe the top 10 most iconic video game characters of all time mario is literally the most iconic a video game character of all time. He's he's not going anywhere, and you can't cut his his little bro. Um, he or oh, little bro? Um, yeah, yeah, he's younger. Um, Luigi is younger. Sorry, I got a little bit confused there. Um, you can't cut cut you can't cut his well uh, girlfriend. It's, Peach isn't his girlfriend, but you can't cut Peach because she is his uh, female love interest, I guess. And you can't cut Bowser. Again, Bowser is probably the most iconic video game villain of all time. He's not going anywhere. Um, all of the other Mario series characters, however, would be dropped, and I think most of these kind of make sense to drop. Um, Daisy and Dr. Mario are probably the most obvious drops um, here because they're clone characters. Uh, Daisy is an Echo, and uh, she literally doesn't differ from Peach in any any small way at all. Um, and, th th like, she won't be a particularly big loss. Um, I know that clones and echoes don't actually that aren't actually as intensive on development time, which is the main reason for keeping them around. Really, however, most of the characters that are echoes really aren't actually worth keeping around anyway. Um, in fact, I don't think any of them are. Um, some of them are relatively popular characters, but almost every single one is basically just. There's no, they wouldn't really be in the conversation regardless of whether they were an Echo or not. Uh, maybe one Echo, um, Dark Samus I would say, is she could potentially stay if she wasn't a, a clone. 
even then I think that there is a greater likelihood she would be cut. Um, so just going uh, going forward in this in this video, all of the echoes and most of the clones are I think all of the clones um, are going to be gone. Some of the semi clones are staying. Uh, mainly because I, I, I feel like there's no point cutting the semi-clones. They are actually quite different in a lot of ways. Um, some of them might go, uh, but the clones and Echoes are going. So Daisy and Dr. Mario are going to be cut. Daisy is just... I mean, she's a popular Mario character, but mainly for the spin-offs. Uh, I mean, that doesn't matter so much, but she isn't... She isn't a character that could really stick around for any, or to be in Smash, for any reason other than being a Peach Cloak. There isn't really anything else to work with, um, and I, I just don't think that she has a strong enough reason to be kept, especially over um, other characters that are also being cut. Um, and Doc, well, I mean, Dr. Mario is Dr. Mario. Let's be honest, he's not, he's not sticking around. Um, he's just basically Mario in a doctor suit. There's no, no point keep, keeping him around. Um, Bowser Jr. and Rosalina are more contentious cuts, I think. Um, especially, mm, well, uh, not even especially Bowser Jr. I think both of them are fairly contentious cuts. Um, but uh, this is going to have to be a roster that takes hard hits. It really is. Um, and the Mario series, as well as the other series that have a lot of characters, and you know the ones I'm talking about, are gonna have to take the brunt of that. Uh, so, Bowser Jr. and Rosalina are great additions. Rosalina is personally one of my favourite video game characters ever, but she has to kind of go, and so does Bowser Jr. They, I couldn't really see keeping them around rather than anyone else that I have kept in this in this concept. Um, so, unfortunately, yeah, they have to go. Um, and then there's Piranha Plant as well. Piranha Plant's a pretty obvious cut. He was always a, a pretty off-the-wall, bizarre addition, and keeping him rather than, you know, again, some of the characters I've kept would just be a kind of an insult. Uh, even though he is actually probably one of the most iconic characters in the entirety of Smash Ultimate, um, because, well, because he is one of the most iconic video game enemies of all time. Uh, but it also eats up Piranha Plant, let's be honest. When you're talking about video game all-stars, sure, Piranha Plant does kind of count, but also, yeah, I, I mean, no one really wants to see... I mean, I, mean, I want to see Piranha Plant stay. He's, he's one of my favourite characters to actually play as. But uh, no one really wants to see Piranha Plant staying over uh, well, a lot of the other characters. So Piranha Plant does have to go, unfortunately. Now, I've talked about the characters that I'm going to cut, but I don't just want to talk about cut characters and who's going to be returning. I also want to talk about new characters. Um, and so, um, Mario is actually going to get two new characters. Um, the first is Captain Toad. Now, this is maybe a fairly obvious one. Um, Toad is probably the most iconic um, Nintendo character that isn't yet in Smash. And while... Captain Toad and Toad aren't the same character. Um, Toad kind of isn't a character. It's kind of unclear, but Toad really isn't a character that has many appearances that you can actually say, that's Toad. Uh, not since Super Mario Bros. 2, anyway. You can make an argument that the spin-off um, the spin-off games like, you know, Mario Party, Mario Golf, Mario Kart, you can make an argument that that Toad is the character Toad. However, you could also just as easily make the argument that um, that is actually just a generic Toad, because Toad is the name of the character, but also the name of the species. This is a problem that Yoshi also has, but less so, because I think it's more obvious when you're, t when you're actually looking at Yoshi the character, or Yoshi the species, more often than not. Um, so when it comes to Toad as a character, I'm not really convinced he is a character. I think he's just a stand-in for the species. Um, and that's why Captain Toad has really taken a much stronger role in the franchise. I can't really think of any, uh, any appearances really of Toad as a character. 
Um, especially seeing as Blue Toad and Yellow Toad are more often than not the playable Toads in Mario games. Um, and obviously Captain Toad. Um, but Captain Toad is really is really a much more significant character in modern Mario. Um, and Captain Toad also brings with him a, a, a far stronger um, a far stronger move set potential. Um, and I think that's quite important. I don't usually like judging character inclusions purely on move set potential. However, if it's a case of looking at you know weighing up Toad or Captain Toad, Captain Toad kind of has more there. Uh, the the idea of a character who can't jump, I think, is an interesting one to play with, uh, because that is Captain Toad's gimmick in his game, and I know that some people sometimes have concerns about the idea of a character in Smash that doesn't jump. I think there are workarounds for that, um, and I would be really interesting uh, interested to see how that could work out. Um, so yeah, Captain Toad would be a very, a very obvious choice for a new character for the Mario franchise. And the second choice is probably even more obvious, and that's Waluigi. There are certain characters that are so highly requested that I, I mean, I can believe that they're not in Smash yet, but I can't believe they won't be in the next one. And there's four of these characters specifically, um, and the first of them is Waluigi. Um, and Waluigi has been so highly requested for so long that he basically dominated Smash speculation even when he was considered to be deconfirmed. Um, and I think that that is, that is a very, very important thing to note. Um, that Waluigi is just so desperately wanted at, at this point that I can't see him not being in the next game. Um, I will talk about the other characters that I think fall into this category as well, um, of characters that have been extremely historically um, highly requested for Smash. Um, and these are characters that I specifically think are basically the most requested characters ever, in my personal opinion obviously, other than Ridley, King K. Rool, Banjo and Sora who, let's be honest, we know that those are the most requested characters ever. Um, at least, you know, they historically they have been. Um, but I think that these characters that I'm going to be talking about are kind of the next level down. Next, I'm going to talk about the Mario sub-franchises. Um, and this is going to be... Uh, well, we'll start with Yoshi because I'm not adding any characters for Yoshi. There are options, Baby Mario and Kamek being the main ones, however, I don't really feel like either gets into this roster for me personally. I don't think either of them is a, a, a big enough deal a, a big enough deal to really get into a roster that is making massive cuts like this. Um, the franchise that will be getting a new character is the Wario franchise, um, and it's fairly obvious who that's going to be. It's going to be Ashley. Ashley is not quite one of the most highly requested characters, in my opinion. Um, and she... I think her popularity in terms of Smash, Smash speculation has faded. Uh, even before she was deconfirmed as an, um, as an assist trophy, I, I kind of felt like she wasn't at, talked about as much as she was in Smash 4 speculation. Um, so... I, 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 I actually only very recently put her on, on this roster. However, I, I do still think that with WarioWare actually well, well, it just got a new game, um, it seems to be doing quite well. It, it's a popular popular franchise. It does make sense for uh, WarioWare to get another character. And there are other options, but Ashley is the forefront of those options because of how highly requested she has been in the past. Uh, the final Mario sub-franchise I'm going to talk about is the Donkey Kong franchise, and nothing's changing here. Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong and King K. Rool are all going to stay. Uh, Donkey Kong is, I mean, never going to be, it, he's never going to be dropped, let's be honest, he's, it's, it's flipping Donkey Kong. Um, Diddy Kong, I, I feel like could be cut, but I, I also, if you're Thinking about it in terms of how important he is to 
um, important he is to the Donkey Kong franchise. He's he's been there basically since the start, um, and it would feel a bit weird to drop him considering that. And King K. Rool, uh, not only is he the most notable villain in the Donkey Kong franchise, he is also one of the most highly requested characters ever in Smash. Dropping him now would be a terrible idea, I think, because you're basically taking a fan favourite away. Um, so, those three characters, they're safe. Next, I'll move on to the Pokemon franchise. Um, and this is... Uh, as with Mario, this is a franchise I know quite well, so I feel quite um, comfortable with talking about Pokemon and what, it, how it should be represented, um, or how I think it will be represented. Um, now, there's some important things to maintain here. Firstly, well, you need to have iconic and popular Pokemon. That's a given. Um, but I think it's also very important to maintain a split of first-generation Pokemon and, well, post-Gen post 1 Pokemon. I think that is a split that is... It, it basically has to be a 50-50 split. I think that Gen 1 is important to represent because of how big it is, how popular it was, um, how iconic the actual Pokemon are. Um, and for that reason, I think it is important to have that split in the middle. Um, because if you just have, like, four or five Gen 1 Pokemon and then only one or two Pokemon from later generations, it's very unbalanced. Um, again, as a prediction, this is how I think it will be viewed as well. So this isn't, this is a standard I am applying, but it isn't, it is one that I think Sakurai or whoever is in charge of the next game will go for as well. Um, so, Pikachu obviously is going to stay. Um, Charizard is also going to stay. Not only is he extremely popular, but it's a Pokemon that they push very, very hard. Um, and I think that that is... It would make no sense, really, for Charizard to be cut. Squirtle and Ivysaur are going to be cut. I, I, I feel like multi-characters in general are going to be cut. Uh, mainly because it just saves on development time. Uh, multi-characters just mean more characters to, to develop for. Um, and having Squirtle and Ivysaur would essentially, in, you know, even though it's one character selects, uh, it's one character slot, it is still three characters in one. So I wouldn't really feel right. Um, it, it wouldn't feel right to to keep Pokemon with so many characters when other franchises are going to be cut. Um, obviously, Pokemon's still going to have a lot of characters, but having a multi-character would just be a, a bit insulting, I think. The last Gen 1 Pokemon that's sticking around, and I know some people are going to say, where's Mewtwo? It's going to be Jigglypuff, and this is one I wish I could cut, because I have never been a fan of Jigglypuff being in Smash. Um, I get why she is, I get it, however, I just have never been a particular fan of it. I would cut Jigglypuff if I thought that was at all possible. But she's a Smash veteran from the very first game, and not a single Smash 64 um, character has been cut at any point, and I don't think they're going to start now. So Jigglypuff seems very much here to stay. Um, and yes, this does mean Mewtwo gets cut. I would love to bring Mewtwo back, however, I don't think any of these Gen 1 Pokemon can really be cut for Mewtwo. And, um, again, I don't think that a, a, I think it's going to be an even split of Generation 1 and gen, later Generation Pokemon. And for that reason, I can't see any of the other ones being cut either. Um, so the next one is, the, the next character that is going to be sticking around is going to be Lucario. Um, this is my favourite Pokemon. You may say that this is bias, but remember I did cut Rosalina, who... I arguably like more than Lucario, so I would say that this is just being realistic. Lucario is one of the biggest, in fact no, I'm just going to say it, it is the biggest Pokemon that is not a Gen 1 Pokemon. Uh, it, it's had so much going for it, it's had its own movie, it was essentially the poster child of Generation 4, it's the poster child of fighting type Pokemon. It was essentially the mascot of Pokémon Tournament. 
it has had it had its own mega evolution and essentially became the poster child of mega evolution it has had again it had a movie and then later it had a very significant arc in a mega evolution arc in the anime and now it's got a very significant arc or a very significant role in the anime as Ash's ace. So Lucario is a Pokemon that is going nowhere. Lucario is too big a is too big a deal to go anywhere. Um, and added to all of that, Lucario came second in the Pokemon of the Year poll um, last year. So uh, again, I just can't really see it being cut considering all of that stuff it has going for it. Um, and p potentially predict predictably, uh, Greninja is also going to be staying. Um, I think Greninja is more expendable than Lucario, uh, consider considering he doesn't really have the same um, he doesn't really have the same legacy. He isn't a, uh, he isn't quite as old a Pokemon, um, and he's been used less even since his debut. I mean, obviously he had his arc in the anime, um, and he was also used in. Um, he was also used in Detective Pikachu. Um, however, uh, I, I, I don't think that that's that much. But because of the fact that it came first in the Pokemon of the Year poll, again, uh, unless something changes, I can't see Greninja going. It is, as far as we know, the most popular Pokemon. You don't cut the most popular Pokemon, you know? Um, so Greninja will also be staying. And the final Pokemon character is going to be a new a new character um, from the whatever the newest generation at the time will be. Uh, at that point, probably either Gen 10 or Gen 11, because um, this this new Smash game is probably going to be something like seven or eight years in the future. Um, so, whatever generation we have, then a new Pokemon from that generation will be there. I, I think that is um, an inevitability. Um, so, uh, I hope you can see what I've done with this. Um, I think this is the most likely scenario. Um, Pichu would never come back. Pichu is a clone. I actually think that Pichu is one of the cleverest uses of a clone, but a clone's a clone, so P P Pichu is not returning. Incineroar was not even popular back when it was uh, released, uh, when it was added to Smash. Um, Incineroar has always been very controversial in the Pokemon community um, and, and fairly controversial in the Smash community when it was added to Smash. Um, it wasn't even in the most recent Pokemon game when it was added to Smash because Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee released a, a bit before Smash and Incineroar wasn't in that. So because of that... Um, uh, I mean, Incineroar is just never going to return. There is no way Incineroar is returning. It, it, I can't see any case for Incineroar being the one to return. Uh, Mewtwo, obviously I've talked about Mewtwo, but I just can't see Mewtwo returning. Um, maybe as DLC, and, and, and that's another thing. You have to remember that DLC is a thing. Um, I'm not going to go into DLC because I, uh, that, that, I, I spent too long making this roster as it is. Um, but... DLC is always a factor that I think has to be considered. Um, so yeah, just that is, is something to think about. Um, characters like Mewtwo may be added as DLC. I just don't see Mewtwo being in the base roster. Next, I'm going to talk about the Zelda series. And Zelda, despite having five characters, sorry, six characters, sorry, I forgot about Sheik. Um, despite having six characters, um, feels like one of the most underrepresented franchises in Smash. Um, and part of the reason is because even though you have six characters, um, well, three of well, three of those characters are essentially just variations of that um, of the characters we already have, the three base characters. We have three characters who are Link, two characters who are Zelda, and one character who is Ganondorf. And that doesn't really feel particularly great. Um, and you could, to be fair, you could probably go even further and, uh, you know, add Pig Ganon or Beast Ganon, Ganon um, and that would be another, that's actually another great character idea, but it would be another version of the, the base, uh, the base three characters. Um, and a lot of Zelda fans have wanted this to change, and I think it will change. Um, so we're going to cut Young Link and Toon Link. There's, they're clones, there's no point in keeping them. Um, and we're also going to cut Sheik. Um, 
and Sheik I wanted to cut essentially because I kind of wanted to keep this as only characters who are actually separate entities from each other. Um, that is a little bit of a personal thing, but there is also another reason, and that is because of one of the other characters I'm going to be adding. Um, so, obviously Link, Ganondorf and Zelda will be returning, but I'm also going to be adding Impa. Impa has not necessarily been one of the most highly requested characters, but she's always been fairly solid in terms of requests. Uh, during Smash 4 speculation, I was never really sold on it, but that was mainly because I only I'd only ever seen Impa as an old woman, and I didn't know that there was this other other version of her that was younger. Um, and that version of her, whether they just give her a uh, you know a generic move set, or whether they go with her Hyrule Warriors uh, move set, um, whichever way they go with it, I think that she would be not just a great addition, but a great way of filling the the slot for Sheik. Uh, with a unique character, um, I think that that would be a really, a really good move to make, uh, and I think that Impa is actually fairly likely because even though she's not one of the base three Zelda characters, she is still a fairly, she is still a fairly consistent character in Zelda. She's in a lot of the games. Uh, it's basically her, Zelda, Link, Ganondorf, and Tingle who appear in a lot of these games. Uh, they are really the the biggest you know mainstays um and i wasn't adding tingle to this because as much as i think he would be a great addition this is meant to be a bit of a prediction and i think impa is just more likely um the second character that zelda is getting is skull kid and this like waluigi is one of the most highly requested characters in smash history just straight up skull kid i i, I remember during smash 4 speculation Skull Kid was always one of the big ones. Not like, again, not on the same level as King K. Rool, Ridley, Sora, and um, and Banjo. But definitely, you know, one of the more notable ones. Um, so, I, I think that Skull Kid is actually very likely as well. Because, again, he's been so highly requested. And because it just it boosts Zelda's representation after so long, it has been so underwhelming. And uh, that is why I think it is. It, I think it's. I, I'm gonna say it, I think it's likely that Skull Kid will be added. The next series I want to talk about is Kirby, um, and I don't think I'm gonna be surprising anyone here. Kirby, King DDD, and Meta Knight can't really be cut. Kirby obviously being the face of the franchise, but uh, King DDD and Meta Knight are massive mainstays. It is a rare game that I, either character isn't there um and as a result i can't really see um i can't really see either character being dropped uh, i don't think anyone can see either character being dropped um and so that just leaves the obvious character to add um and that's bandana d uh bandana d is quite like impa not necessarily one of the highest requested characters but definitely definitely with some very strong support um, Bandana D is practically a given at this point. I don't, I don't really see anything that would stop it. Um, he is a perfect pick for a base roster character, um, and yeah, I just think it's going to happen. It, it gives Kirby some representation that Kirby hasn't had any representation since Brawl, uh, when Meta Knight and King DDD were added. And it's a relatively big ser series. It's a relatively big franchise. So I, yeah, I can see Bandana D being added, especially seeing as he is, um, he is one of the more, well, he is one of the more popular requests for a character in Smash. And now we get to the franchise that I really was not looking forward to talking about, and that is Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem is, uh, it's. It's difficult to talk about Fire Emblem without there being some sort of war um, on well, on either side, really. Whether you think that Fire Emblem is overrepresented or whether you think it's not. Um, I personally um, fall into the camp that thinks it is overrepresented. Um, but that comes with a little bit of a caveat. Um, and that caveat is that I think that every single character that has been added to Fire Emblem 
should have been added at that time. It made sense for them to be added. Um, and I'll explain what I mean. Marth and Roy, fine, they were, you know, you had a new character at the time, and you had um, a fan, fav a fan favorite character. That's fine. Ike, again, a new character at the time, replaced Roy, that's fine. Um, then you come to Smash 4, and you got both Lucina and Robin. Um, Lucina was a very highly requested character, but wouldn't have had a particularly um, unique moveset, hence why she was an Echo. Um, and so Robin was also added. Um, and Robin, actually pretty well, from what I understand, I don't play Fire Emblem, but pretty well represents Awakening and just Fire Emblem, the magic side of Fire Emblem in general. Um, so Robin was a pretty good addition as well. I think that both of those were really good additions. Um, and Corrin, I mean, no one likes Corrin. However, I think it's actually extremely important for every game, or every franchise, I should say, in Smash to be represented by its most recent entry. Or a character from that most recent entry. Um, so I think it would have been weird for people to maybe have gotten into Fire Emblem through Fire Emblem Fates. And then to maybe play Smash and realise, hold on, Fire Emblem has it is in Smash. But I have not got a character to play from this game. Uh, that You know, I think it's actually quite important for... Um, for the any franchise has to be represented by a character that appears in its most recent game. Um, I think that should always be maintained. Um, and for a franchise like Fire Emblem, that means making sure that they update the roster um, to add new characters. Um, you know, from most the most recent games as they come out. I think that is important. So I think Karin was not the greatest addition, but was a fine addition. Um, and then you come to Sm uh, Smash Ultimate, and Chrom was added, and that was fine because Chrom was again, like Lucina, a fan favorite request. Both of those were extremely uh, highly requested uh, during Smash Four speculation. They were kind of like Palutena, uh, Rosalina levels of, spe of speculated and, and, and requested. Um, so again, Chrom being added uh, when he missed out his chance in Smash Four, that sounds fine to me. And you might know where I'm going with this, but Byleth, um, again, Byleth was added um, in Ultimate's DLC. Again, not necessarily a great addition for DLC. However, it meant that, you know, people who were new to Fire Emblem from Three Houses would see representation from the series that they love, from the game that they love, uh, in Smash Ultimate. Um, it's specifically um, for new, new players, uh, rather than you know, people who have enjoyed the franchise before, because, you know, those are people that would already get a lot out of playing as Marth or Robin, a character that they, they, they have played in previous games. But for people who have not, who have only played the most recent game in the franchise, I think it's important to maintain recent characters. So as much as Byleth is, you know, one of my least favourite characters added to Smash, I think adding them was the right decision. So, why do I think that Fire Emblem is overrepresented when I have just outlined why I think every character should have been added? Well, I think that the issue is just not an ultimate problem. I think it's actually entirely on Smash 4 and how that handled Fire Emblem. I think that Fire Emblem, I think that Smash 4 did not cut enough Fire Emblem characters. Um, I think that Ike and Roy should not have made it into Smash 4. I think a base roster of three Fire Emblem characters would have seemed fine to most people. Um, and I think um, a, after DLC, having Corrin as well, I think having four Fire Emblem characters, again, for most people would have been fine. I, you know, there would have still been people saying that it was overrepresented. However, I think most people would have taken it fine. And I think that Marth, um, Ro uh, not Roy, sorry, Marth, um, Lucina, um, Robin, and Corin would have actually been okay as um, as representatives of Fire Emblem in Smash. Um, obviously, it would be nice to have characters like Ike and Roy, uh, but I think having them in did kind of 
make it feel like Fire Emblem was overrepresented. Um, and that's essentially the mindset that has been carried forward. Because of how it was handled in Smash 4, now everyone sees it as overrepresented. Even though I don't think they would have if that hadn't happened in Smash 4. If we had, you know, been left with four characters at the end of Smash 4's DLC, I don't think people would have minded at all about Smash, have it, Smash Ultimate having seven characters and then later eight. Because I think they would have realised that actually Ultimate was bringing back all the characters. So it made, it made sense that all of the characters were going to return. And then, you know, adding Crom made sense. Adding Violet made sense. So I think the handling was very poor. And I don't think it's just a Fire Emblem thing. Despite him being my favourite Pokemon and my Smash Brawl main, I always thought Lucario should have been cut. Um, it should Lucario should have been cut from um, should have been cut from Smash Four um, to make way for a new a new character. Um, and I'm not unhappy that they didn't do that, but I think it's what should have happened. I think the issue is that you bloat the roster too much, uh, and certain franchises get bloated too much if you try to maintain all of their characters with franchises that get new new casts every game like fire emblem um you kind of need to cut the fat you need to cut characters um uh, when you add them so yeah that's what they did in brawl they cut roy to add ike they should have done the same thing they should have cut ike to add robin and lucina um and i think that this is where they should also go next um where fire emblem is going to need to take some pretty severe cuts um so the characters i'm going to be returning are marth ike and robin the reason i'm doing this is because marth is obviously the most iconic fire emblem character and ike um is very popular now i know i just said that ike should have been dropped from smash 4 but i think at this point and it's the same with lucario he is popular enough that he makes sense as another addition. And the final character I'm going to be adding is Robin. And that's because Awakening needs a rep. Um, Awakening was single-handedly the most... Well, okay, that's not true. But Awakening was the most one of the most important games in the franchise. Um, it needs to be represented. Um, now, Lucina and Crom are obviously going to be cut because of the fact that they're Echoes. Um... And I'm also cutting Roy, partially because I don't necessarily think he has much need to return, but also he is a semi-clone, and I don't think that he needs to really return thanks to that. Um, Corin, obviously, Fates wasn't necessarily, from what I understand, the most popular game. Uh, not many people like Corin as a character in Smash anyway. There's no point in keeping Corin around. Byleth is the more controversial one, but you've got to remember that I am treating this um, as... I'm trying to predict what's happening, and I predict that when we get to the next Smash game, there will be another, uh, there will be another Fire Emblem game that is potentially more popular than Three Houses. So I don't really see any reason to keep Byleth around, because being from the most recent game is really the only thing that got Byleth in in the first place so w with that gone Byleth doesn't necessarily need to, to stick around you could swap Byleth out maybe for Ike um I still think though that um it's better if you don't um I think um of course Fire Emblem is also going to get a new character here um and that is going to be from the most recent game um, just a character again I, like with the Pokemon I can't actually say what that is because it's based on what the most recent game is um, but um, but yeah so I think it's just going to be a new character from the new Fire Emblem game this leaves Fire Emblem with four characters which is a pretty drastic cut but it's also the same not the same cut but it's a, a similar cut to what Mario and Pokemon have had to endure um I don't think it's controversial to say that most people think that franchises in Smash should be represented um, kind of almost proportionally to how popular they, they are. Um, and Fire Emblem is, as much as people try to claim that it's one of Nintendo's biggest franchises, it's still a relatively small franchise in the grand scheme of things. 
Um, and that is why it's going to be taking a cut and having less characters than Mario, Pokemon, and even, you know, Zelda. Um, but I also don't feel right completely massacring the franchise of its characters in Smash. It just doesn't, it just doesn't feel right. Um, so, four characters seems like a very, very fair compromise to me. Um, I also like the split that I have. Um, I feel like I've got a quite a nice, a nice balance of the different, of characters from different stages of Fire Emblem or, or from games that are quite spread out. Um, you've got Marth from whatever game he was in, then Ike from a later game, then Robin from, you know, Awakening, which was in, um, you know, the beginning of the 2010s, uh, and then a new character who will be from, you know, probably late 2020s, um, so I, I think that that is, that is a good, a good spread to have, um, and I also quite like the fact that we have, um, an even split as well between traditional sword fighting characters and probably more unique characters. Robin is a much more unique fighter, and I would lo I mean, they have tried to be more unique with Corrin and Byleth as well, and I think that will continue. So I think that's a nice split to have, um, you know, just standard swordies with, you know, still with different movesets. Um, so standard swordies and then, you know, more unique characters that play around with representing Fire Emblem uh, in a little bit of a different way. Maybe an axe character or, or, or something like that, you know, whatever everyone's been wanting. Next, I want to talk about Animal Crossing. And Animal Crossing has exploded in popularity. If we were to try and represent this in the same way that I um, have tried to do the other franchises, where the where it essentially gets represented proportionally to how many um, to or well, how popular the franchise is, uh, Animal Crossing would probably have five characters easily, um, and I could tell you who they would be. Um, well, I could tell you the options. I mean, you've got characters like. Um, K.K. Slider is, go is a great option. Bladders is a great option. Mr. Rossetti is a great option. I even like the idea of Capen, Tortima, um, one of the Able sisters. I think these are all really great options. Um, and I, I would be interested to see how they can lean into that. But also, this is a game where franchises are taking very heavy hits. It's really not fair for a franchise like Animal Crossing to get more than one character. And I know that other franchises have got more than one character. Um, specifically, uh, Mario um, Mario got two characters, um, and so did Zelda. However, both franchises took heavy cuts and were left with um, less characters in, in the end than they gained. Um, or, or less characters than they started with. So um, I don't think it's fair to give a, character, a franchise like Animal Crossing no cuts, and also to get more than one character. Um, so, yeah, spoilers. Villager and Isabel are not going to be cut. Villager was the first Animal Crossing character in Smash. I can't really see it being cut. Um, and also is, you know, a great a great character to represent Animal Crossing. The moveset is... It's, it's a great way of representing Animal Crossing. Um, and Isabel is... Or, or was, during New Leaf, the mascot of the franchise. I think that has changed now. I'm going to touch on that in a second. Um, but I think during New Leaf, Isabel was undeniably the mascot. Um, and so I can't really see her um, being cut. Um, that moves us on to who the new character would be. And this is going to be... Other than Toad, the most iconic Nintendo character that is not in Smash. Cannot believe that this is not more heavily speculated. Tom Nook has to be added to Smash, right? Uh, he has to be added. Uh, like, he is such an iconic um, character. Um, he is such an iconic character. And from such a massive franchise now. And people say that it's mainly because of COVID that Animal Crossing blew up. It's not. Animal Crossing, it, it, it was definitely helped by COVID, but Animal Crossing was already on its way. It was already a massive franchise. It just got more massive, as every game has on um, on the Switch. Um, and Tom Nook 
is the face of Animal Crossing New Horizons. He took that title away from Isabel. Um, and I just, I just cannot imagine that they would not capitalize on that. I cannot imagine that Tom Nook will not be in the next game because he is such a big deal in Animal Crossing. He is such a popular and iconic Nintendo character. He is, he is the, the he is practically the face of capitalism. Let's be honest. Um, yeah, Tom Nook has to be added. I, I, I can't, like, again, this is not necessarily a wish list. He, he would be on my wish list. But this is not me speaking from a wish list point of view. This is me speaking from a point of view of, uh, I, I just don't see how Tom Nook will not be added to Smash. Animal Crossing is so big, I do not get how it will not get um, a character, another character added. And, uh, you know, I, I listed a bunch of options. None of those options are as good as Tom Nook. Tom Nook is going to be in the next game. Come on, let's, let's be real. Tom Nook is going to be in the next game. It's not even a discussion at this point. I mean, it is. But, you know, I'm that confident. Next, I'm going to talk about Metroid. Um, my experience with Metroid isn't the... I haven't got the most experience. I've played the original and I've played Super and that's it. Um, I've enjoyed, especially Super. I enjoyed Super Metroid, what I played with it before I, I, I got stuck. And I have gone back to it many times. I can't get myself unstuck. I don't know what I, I'm going to do. I would like to play more of the Metroid franchise, especially now with Dread Out um, and Prime 4 coming out as well. Um, but I still do have an idea of where I think this is going to go. Um, I think uh, it is fairly obvious that Dark Samus will go. Um, you could make a case for Dark Samus being de-echoed and getting a unique moveset. I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. I, As much as Dark Samus is a great character to have um, representing Metroid, I, I don't necessarily think... It, it, I don't necessarily think she is going to stick around. Um, and Zero Suit Samus I'm also going to cut. Uh, again, this is kind of because she is the same character as Samus. Um, if we're making harsh cuts, and again, this is... Uh, this is a game that's making harsh cuts. Um, a, a, a character like Zero Suit Samus doesn't really feel that important important enough anyway to keep around. Um, I, I don't think that's going to be particularly con controversial. I think that um, people will... People either probably think that Zero Suit Samus will be merged back into a multi-character with Samus. Um, or they think that... Um, or they think that she'll be cut, so I don't think that's going to be particularly controversial. Um, and obviously Ridley's not going anywhere. Smash fans made a big enough deal about him uh, being added in the first place. Like King K. Rool, he is not going anywhere. Uh, he is one of the great Nintendo villains, and he needs to stick around. Uh, these, yeah, he needs to stick around. Um... But Metroid is going to get a gain, um, and that gain is a character. Uh, I don't actually know who. Um, and this is because, like with Fire Emblem and uh, and Pokemon, I think this is going to be a character from whatever the next game, or not if, even the next game, but what, just from a future game in the Metroid franchise. Um, it could potentially be a character from Dread. I have not played Dread, however... I'm going to put a spoiler warning down because I am going to talk about a character that I think is a spoiler in Dread. So if you don't want to hear that, uh, just you know, skip a, a little bit. Um, um, so I am going to... I, I, w I would potentially add Ravenbeak to this. Um, mainly because he seems to be a fairly... Um, a, a, a fairly well, a very important character. He's the main boss in in Metroid Dread, um, and I've over the past few days, especially, I've actually heard a little more chatter about the possibility of Raven Beacon Smash. Um, I hadn't actually heard of him before that, um, and I think that that would be a possibility. However, I think that Metroid Prime Four and whatever comes after Metroid Prime Four. Um, is going to probably introduce new characters and those will be where the focus is. So while Ravenbeak is a good choice, I don't necessarily think that um, I don't necessarily think that he would be, I don't think in the future 
he would be added because I think that some other character that is new to the franchise, newer to the franchise, uh, would be added. Um, the reason that I am um, giving Metroid a new um, a new character is because I think, well, Dread obviously has been a very popular game. It seems to have done really well, and I think Prime Four has even more scope to 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 really do well. Um, Prime Four could actually, I think, launch itself to be a new AAA title. Um, I think it, it it could potentially be not necessarily selling as much as the likes of Breath of the Wild, but it could have the same um, impact as Breath of the Wild had. Zelda was a much smaller series before Breath of the Wild, still one of, still bigger than franchises like Kirby um, and Fire Emblem, but definitely it, it, it wasn't the the biggest seller. Uh, Breath of the Wild completely changed that. Um, Breath of the Wild essentially made uh, it made Zelda a big, big name. Um, it made it one of the biggest AAA titles. Um, and I think that Metroid Prime 4, because of the fact that it, I know that it's a, an atmospheric um, exploration game, but it is it also has shooting elements, and that just feels very in line with what um, what is popular these days. And given that Metroid Dread has done so well, I can only see Metroid Prime 4 doing better, and the franchise just continuing to flourish. And because of that, I think that Metroid is in a prime position to get more representation in Smash. Uh, even though I am cutting two characters, um, I think that it still feels like a game to me because obviously one of the characters was the clone. Um, and also um, because of the fact that this is a cut roster and I think that going from four characters to three under those um, circumstances is actually pretty good. Next, I'm going to talk about Star Fox, and uh, nothing's changing here. Fox, Falco, and Wolf are all going to be sticking around. I did almost cut Wolf. Um, I think the reason I didn't, um, I did make a very significant change. I'll talk about this later. I did make a very significant change, um, basically after Sora was 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 announced. Um, I made a very significant change to this roster, and it freed up a few uh, a few a few places. Um, and I just figured Wolf would be a shame to lose. You know, you would be losing a villain. Um, Star Fox is not necessarily one of Nintendo's biggest franchises, but it, it definitely has the scope to be bigger, especially if it gets a game on the Switch. Um, and it also feels like one of the classic Nintendo franchises, one of the big classic ones. Um, so to lose one of its main villains just seems like a, a shame. Um, so I'm not necessarily super convinced that Wolf should stick around. I think he will though. Um, in the end I think he will stick around. Um, partially because of the fact that he is a villain and losing villains in Smash is not necessarily the biggest um, and it's not the end of the world. But I think it's not ideal either. The next franchise I'm going to be talking about is Splatoon, and Splatoon is an interesting one. Um, it falls into a similar category to me as Animal Crossing, um, where this feels like it's underrepresented. I think Splatoon should probably have, if we were purely doing this based on representation, I think it should have um, probably four characters. Um, now that is obviously with the caveat that it needs to have characters to be able to add. Um, although we are getting quite a few good characters in Splatoon. Um, and so I think that there are options there. Um, however, um, because of, again, the fact that I don't really want to add too many characters. Um, I don't want to add too many characters to certain franchises. Um, again, Splatoon, like Animal Crossing, is a newer, newer franchise in Smash, so hasn't had time to naturally build up um, the amount of characters. That is kind of what I'm going for, where they will start to build up that over the next few games. They will start to build up that roster to the point where they do have more characters. Um, for now, I am content with keeping Inkling around and adding just one Splatoon character. Um, and this again might seem like it's more of a wish list than a prediction, but I am going to explain my thought process here. I am going to add Marina. Now, um, most of you who have played Splatoon should know who Marina is. Um, she is 
part of the duo um, that pre- the, the duo off the hook, which um, is a musical duo that essentially are like presenters for the news in um, Splatoon Two. Um, she is one of the two, um, and it might seem weird that I'm choosing Marina. Some people might have already predicted why I'm choosing her, at least partially, uh, but I do want to make a case for why that is not the only reason. Um, so, you would... Firstly, a lot of people think that Oxaling should be a rep for Splatoon. That is a terrible um, character to add. Um, with Splatoon 3, they seem to be just leaning hard on the idea that Octolings are no more different than, uh, than ink, to Inklings than ge- different genders, like male and female. Um, they, they seem to be really leaning hard into the idea that Octolings are interchangeable with in- Inklings. Um, and so I think it would be a real shame, to be honest, to uh, make Marina, oh, sorry, not Marina, to make Octoling a character instead of just a costume for Inkling. Um, I also think he doesn't really have much scope outside of just being an Echo. Um, and obviously I cut all of the Echoes and I don't want to add any more. Um, so yeah, just I don't like the idea of Ockling being added. It's It just doesn't feel right to me. I would rather add an actual character, um, and not just that, but a popular character. And the most popular characters are obviously the Squid Sisters and Off the Hook. Um, so the options essentially are Callie, Marie, Pearl and Marina. And of these I chose Marina. Now my my initial idea was for Callie to be the character and that Pearl, Marina and Marie would be her alts. So each character would get two alts. Um, and the more I thought about it, the more I just kind of felt like Marina is the right choice to make. And I know this is going to annoy a few people. A part of it is because of her race. Um, and that is because we just do not have any characters of Carla in Smash. Uh, Ganondorf you can make a, a case for, but he's green. I really do not want our only character of Carla in Smash to be green. That just feels wrong. I know he's a Gerudo. I know that the Gerudo are kind of, uh, I believe they're Arabian inspired. So, you know, that that would make him a character of color. But his skin color is green. Uh, He is not a character of color in the way that I think people want him to be. Um, So, so yeah, I, I would, uh, it, it, it feels, it doesn't feel necessarily personally off to me. That Smash does not have any characters of color because Smash's job is to represent video games, uh, 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 or not even to represent video games a lot of the time, but to represent Nintendo and video games. Um, and I feel like there really aren't that many black um, or dark-skinned uh, video game characters, and especially not Nintendo Nintendo characters. Um, there are options, um, or good options, I would say, some of them. Um, Doc Louie would be an option, however, Punch-Out is, um, well, it's not a franchise I think will get another rep. I don't think there's a reason for it to get a rep. Um, So adding him just because he's black feels counterproductive. Uh, uh, I mean, it would work. Um, And he is a popular character, honestly. Uh, He is actually a fairly good option, I think. However, there is the case that uh, I just don't think the punch out could really do with another rep. I don't think it needs one, especially in a severely cut roster. Um, there's also Twin Tail, but personally, I, I don't think Arms is going to be relevant by the time the next Smash game comes out. And even if it does, uh, Spring Man is above Twin Tail in the pecking order for Arms characters. Uh, it, it, I actually kind of think it's a little bit silly that he was chosen over Min Min, but I'm going to get to that in a minute anyway. Um, the, uh, you also you also have Rodan uh, from Bayonetta as an option, um, and he he is a good option. I will get to third parties in a minute um, as to how I'm handling third parties, so you'll, you'll, you'll see why I haven't added him. 
Um, he is actually a pretty good option considering uh, what what how big Bayonetta is for Nintendo at the moment. It's not a first party franchise, but it is. It's all. It's almost treated like one, and Bayonetta 3 seems like it is one of the biggest games for Nintendo next year. Bayonetta is big for Nintendo, and Rodan would be the natural. If you're avoiding Echoes, um, Rodan is the most natural um, second character to add because uh, Jean is the uh, or John is the only character, the only other character that would really be in the running, and. She would literally just, she has nothing about her that would be anything but an Echo or a clone. So Rodan is the natural inclusion. However, again, third party and I'm going to... You'll see why I haven't added, added Rodan and yeah, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see when you, I come to the third parties. Um, off the top of my head, the only other option I can think of is Elma from Xenoblade Chronicles X. This is a character I cannot believe was not added. Um, because she, she, it seemed perfect, a darker skinned character who was, you know, who was from a game that was, okay, not the biggest game, it, it was, but it, it was, again, it would have represented the most recent Xenoblade game, uh, whilst also being a, char a character of colour. Uh, maybe the idea that she needed to fight in a mech would have just not made her not work, uh, I don't know, I can't really speak to that. Um, but Elmer would be a would have been a great option, but Xenoblade Chronicles X is basically gone now. Um, Xenoblade is going to move on, and uh, even if X gets a, a re-release, even if X gets a re-release on the next console, I, I I I can't see it getting. I can't see it being. Um, I can't see Elmer getting into the game. I, I just think that it, it's gone. Xenoblade Chronicles X is gone. And that kind of leaves Marina as the best option for a character of colour. Um, because not only is she from a franchise that really needs a rep, let's be honest. Uh, oh, uh, before I say that, Urbosa is another option, but she's a part of a group of four. Um, and Breath of the Wild is going to be long gone by the time we get well, by the time we get to the next game. Um, yeah, Urbosa would be a decent option. I just don't think it's a I don't think it's the greatest option ever. Um, but yeah, so I don't think it will be our Urbosa. Uh, Marina is from a franchise that desperately needs a rep. Um, and not just that, but she is a very popular character, actually. I would say, even though the Squid Sisters as a duo are more popular, um, I, I, I don't think it will be controversial to say that Marina is probably the most popular as an individual. Um, she really does, uh, I mean, uh, she's my favourite personally, so again, you can say maybe this is bias, but I do think it makes sense not only um, in that, uh, not only in that she is a, a very popular character, but I also think that from the point of view of Nintendo, making, making that step and having that first black character is actually probably going to be a pretty big deal, and Marina is the best route into that. Obviously, this also depends um, on how big a role she has in the future of Splatoon. I hope she has a big one, um, but it, it again, it really all depends. Um, um, the Squid Sisters could work as a character, but I don't think a dual or multi-character really fits the Squid Sisters. I, I, uh, I don't think there's a reason to do that, and Marina, I just think Marina works. Um, I, I, I think it would be a great addition, and I think it's actually a fairly likely one. I think it's likely because of her race. I think it's a good addition for reasons other than that. Um, and as for how she wouldn't just be an Inkling Echo, um, well, she could still have Ink in her moveset, but I like the idea of musical-based characters, or, or characters that use music uh, in, in their, in their moveset. Um, KK Slider is a potential option for that. Uh, but Marina is another, and I, I quite like the idea, uh, the idea of a, muse, a, a moveset that uses music. Uh, the next franchise I'm going to talk about is Xenoblade. Um, this is a fairly simple one. I've already talked about how I think multi-characters should be cut, so Pyra and Mithra are uh, immediately on the chopping block. Um, but they would have been on the chopping block anyway, uh, simply because 
it is highly unlikely that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is going to be the most recent game by the time the next Smash game comes out. Xenoblade will just get a character from that franchise uh, or from that game when when it comes out. Um, so yeah, um, Shulk will return. Um, he seems to be the most iconic character from Xenoblade. Um, he was from the first game as well. Um, Shulk will return and he will be joined by a new character from that franchise. Um, uh, I think that is reasonable. Um, yeah, again, I, I think if we're getting rid of the multi-characters, and you could just bring back Pyra, but again, I, I think keeping with recent characters works well for uh, for franchises that have um, rotating casts, as Xenoblade Chronicles does. Next, I want to talk about the, mo the Mother series. Um, Mother is an interesting one because by all intents, or, or by... By, but in, in all ways, it should be, you would think, the least popular, least, um, or, or the most niche franchise in Smash. Um, and yet, it has become so big in, not public consciousness, but just in internet consciousness, I think. Um, obviously, we're not going to be able to catch Cart Ness. Again, he is one of the original 12. Um... He and, and also he is the most iconic character from the Mother series. Um, I just don't, I don't feel, I don't feel comfortable with cutting him, honestly. <laughs> um, and Lucas, um, other than the fact that you know Lucas is also part of my name, um, I don't think Lucas can go. And there's two reasons for that. Firstly, because of how big Mother Three has become as an internet, a, a topic of conversation on the internet. Um, Mother 3 is the game that got away, essentially. The game that needs, you know, that people want to be localised. Um, that people have gone to painstaking efforts to localise themselves. Um, te even Terry Crews tweeted about Mother 3 and, and it, it being localised. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, I, it just feels like getting rid of Lucas, considering what Mother 3 represents... Yeah, I just can't. I just can't see any justification for that now. Um, and not just that, but I, I have been of the belief for quite a while that Mother is going to get something. Um, probably not a new game because, from what I understand, um, the the franchise is done. Uh, the story that they wanted to tell has been told. Um, and so yeah, it won't get a new game necessarily. A remaster that could happen. Um, finally, bringing Mother Free to the to the West. Um, that I could definitely see happening. Um, and if that happens, Lucas's place is fairly assured, I think. Um, I think that Mother would actually become quite popular. Um, and I know that's a, a bit of a weird thing to say. Um, but I, I think Mother would become quite popular. Um, partially probably because of Undertale and how, um, you know, Earthbound specifically... Um, was a big inspiration behind uh, um, Undertale. And Undertale is quite a big thing on the internet as well. Um, and so I think that a lot of people could go from Undertale to um, a, a Mother remaster collection. Um, especially, I, I cannot imagine that Toby Fox would not promote it, you, you know, even even if he's, he doesn't work on it. And he very well could work on it, let's be honest, because he, he is definitely on Nintendo's radar. Um... But even if he didn't work on it, let's be honest, he is going to be hyped as hell, and he would promote it. He would, he would, he would send his fans right, right that way. Um, so yeah, I could definitely see, I could definitely see Mother becoming quite popular actually. And if it does become popular, I just can't see Ness or Lucas um, being cut. Uh, that's just how it is. Um, so again, if we're talking predictions. That's my prediction um, that Mother and uh, or that Ness and Lucas are going are going to be in the game because Mother is probably going to be more popular. The last franchise that is going to have more than one character is going to be Kid Icarus, and initially this was not the case. Um, Kid Icarus was initially going to be reduced to just Pit, um, but very much like Wolf. Uh, when I opened up, when I, I made a change quite late on after Sora was announced, 
um, and I op I essentially had an opening for a few characters. And Palutena felt like a character that I couldn't really, I, di I didn't really want to cut. Uh, well, not, not even that I didn't want to cut, I felt fine with cutting Palutena. But, um, it, one of the things that I was very aware of whilst I was making this was that you have to make sure that you have good gender representation. Um, this is very similar to um, Marina and the race representation, but it is very important to have female characters. Uh, I still think that the reason that characters like Isabel, Min Min, and Pyra and Mithra got in over Tom Nook, um, Springman, and um, and Rex, uh, Rex with Pyra, I guess. Um, not entirely, I, I think that there are actually other reasons, but I think that one of the reasons that they were so willing to go down those paths was because of the fact that they were female characters. Um, I don't necessarily regard that as an issue. Um, I think, I mean, in certain cases, like with Springman, I would have rather they'd gone with Springman. I understand why they did choose Min Min, um, if that was part of the reason. Um, however, I do think that it is very important to maintain a decent number, a decent, you know, gender representation. Um, and this roster doesn't necessarily do that as well as it could do. However, um, things like adding Marina, um, adding Ashley, and maintaining Palutena, um, I think that they are important in being able to make sure that there are still a plenty of female characters. So, um, I, I, I still think that Pitt and Palutena, I think that Kid Icarus can have two characters. I do think that there is a possibility for Kid Icarus to get another game before the next Smash game. If that happens, Palutena will definitely return. Um, but even if that even if that doesn't happen, I still think Palutena has a pretty good shot of returning. Um, just because I don't think they will want to cut all of their female characters. Even though some, such as Rosalina, I can see getting cut. The next, um, I guess, group of characters I'm going to talk about are the returning characters um, that are part of single, um, single, fr um, sing single character franchises. Um, and... None of these are going to be getting new characters. They're just just spoilers, <laughs> um, and I will I will explain why. Um, Olimar, for example, I even if um, or, you know there is a new game, um, a pick, the, the fabled Pikmin Four that uh, apparently existed and we don't know if still exists. Um, even if that has a, a you know a new character, I. I it's probably going to be a character that would play very similar to Olima. Um and there are uh, uh, there are options for Pikmin. I think the uh, the Plasm Wraith, uh, I believe, is a, a a boss, a final boss from uh, from a Pikmin game would be an option, but I don't think that's a particularly good option. Um, so to avo avoiding clones, uh, I think that Olima kind of has to. Stay as the only Pikmin rep, um, and on um, yeah. Uh, e e I, even though I do think we will get a Pikmin game uh, before we get a new Smash game, I don't think that Olimar needs. I think Olimar is fine here as the only Pikmin rep. Um, Punch Out again. Th that could get a game in the future. Even so, I don't see it uh, being the biggest thing ever, and I don't see Punch Out getting a character. I don't think there's much of a reason. Uh, Doc Louie is the best option. Uh, King Hippo would be a pretty good option as well. But uh, but I don't think Punch Out as a franchise is big enough to really warrant it. Captain Falcon is going to also be returning. F Zero, again, could could get a game. I genuinely do believe that. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's a racing game. It's, uh, it's difficult to make movesets for characters from racing games. The, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, and I think Captain Falcon works fine. I don't think we need another another um, F Zero rep. Um, Captain Falcon works. Uh, he, he he he. I mean, he is basically a Smash character. There's no way he was going to get cut, but he um, uh, and, and yeah, Olimar and pa Little Mac also. I just wouldn't want to cut them. Uh, they are from relatively you know pop, fairly popular uh, Nintendo franchises. 
Um, and the same with um, F-Zero. Even though it is a smaller franchise, it is very well loved. Um, and so I can't see it getting cut. I just can't see it getting another character either. I really hope that no one expects Ice Climbers to be getting a, uh, another rep. Um, Ice Climbers are fine on their own. Um, same kind of goes with Rob, Game & Watch, and Duck Hunt. Um, uh, Rob uh, is... Uh, I mean, you could potentially add a character from, from the games that use Rob, but no. Uh, Game & Watch, you could add Mrs. Game & Watch, maybe, but that would just be an Echo or a clone. I, I don't, I, that doesn't fill me with excitement, honestly. Um, and then you have Duck Hunt. Um, yeah, d d Duck Hunt... D um, I, I, um, on my secondary, um, Twitter account where I try to, uh, every day I try to make a character concept for a Smash character, um, I, I, uh, about a month ago I had to try and do one for Duck Hunt. The best I could come up with, uh, was, um, a rebush from Duck Hunt. There is that little in Duck Hunt that hasn't already been used in Duck Hunt's moveset. Um, so... Overall, Duck Hunt, yeah, again, another franchise that is not getting a new character. Um, but neither of those three, I think, well, I guess not, none of these characters, but uh, Ice Climbers, too, uh, too popular in Smash, uh, been in Smash for too long, not going to get cut again. It was a pretty, it, people didn't like it when they were cut, cut from Smash 4, so Ice Climbers are safe. Rob and, and Mr. Game & Watch represent very important parts of Nintendo's history. It would be a massive cry and shame to lose that. Um, and I don't think we're going to lose that. I don't think... I, they, again, I think that they are fairly safe. Uh, Dark Hunt is potentially on the dodgiest ground, I think. But, I mean, the dog from Dark Hunt is one of the most iconic NES characters. One of the most, uh, Dark Hunt is one of the most um, iconic uh, NES games. And, I mean, the, the laughing dog is a, tr a true icon. Maybe less so in the modern age because it's been a long time. But... I still think that losing Duck Hunt would be a great shame. Um, so yeah, probably, probably the most likely on the, cu the, the cutting block here, but I don't think Duck Hunt is going anywhere. The final um, first party character is going to be the Mii. Um, this is very self-explanatory. The Miis are one of the most iconic Nintendo characters ever. Um, the, and they serve the purpose of um, essentially having custom characters. I would like Miis to be expanded upon. I would like them to have more different types of moves. I do like what they did, where a lot of their moves are essentially the same moves as other characters have, or popular move types, because um, it makes it feel like you're building a character using parts from different Smash characters. Um, but I would like them to go further in that direction, as well as having a um, a mage class, as well as the um, as well as the brawler, sword fighter, um, and gunner, uh, because magic attacks are actually quite popular in Smash, um, and it would be good to um, it would be good to have a character who does um, it, to, it would be good to have a character who does. Um, represent that side of Smash as well. A uh, me character, I mean. Uh, but the other thing that Mii's add is the option of me um, of, of me costumes. And this has become a very big thing. In Smash 4, it was a big thing. It's become an even bigger thing in Ultimate. I don't think that they're going to want to cut that. So, yeah, we are definitely having the Mii's back. I, I think it, it's it's an inevitability. Uh, we, we I know not everyone is super keen on them. I like how they, I like them, I like how they were implemented, and I just don't see them being cut. Um, I want to talk about the two characters that I did not add in, um, and these are Wii Fit Trainer and uh, Min Min. Wii Fit Trainer um, is easier to explain. Um, Wii Fit is a dead franchise. I love Wii Fit. I'm actually, uh, I know that this might be um, a bit of a weird thing to say, but I'm a genuinely a pretty big Wii Fit fan. I love Wii Fit as a game. I will play that game unironically. Um, and so having Wii Fit representation, you would maybe think is great. It's something that I would want. I just don't like that it's Wii Fit Trader. And I get why it's Wii Fit Trader. It's, it was the perfect WTF edition. Um, however, 
the Wii Fit trainer is a very bad representation of Wii Fit. Simply because Wii Fit has two sides to it. It has the it has the stuff that people actually play, which is the balance games and the aerobic exercises, um, and just the, the generally more gamey games. Um, and then it has the stuff that people don't play, which is um, which is the yoga and muscle workouts. Um, the stuff that is more like actual games is just much more fun, um, and like because of that, like the Wii Fit Trainer isn't actually Wii Fit Trainer isn't actually that important or iconic a character in Wii Fit. It's a character that most people could almost entirely miss if they played Wii Fit. Um, and for that reason, I don't like Wii Fit Trainer being the Wii Fit rep. I think Wii Balance Board would be a much better rep. Um, but again, Wii Fit is kind of a dead franchise, so I can't really see Wii Fit Balance Board being added, even though it is one of my most wanted editions. Um, unironically, one of my most wanted editions. Um, so yeah, Wii Fit Trainer just is not going to return. I mean, it could return, but I'm, I'm going to say not going to return. And Min Min, uh, ARMS, as I've mentioned before, I don't think is going to return, um, or I don't think it's going to be a big franchise in Nintendo's future. Um, I think that they are going to put much more effort into the newer franchises that have actually gone somewhere, um, primarily those being Splatoon um, and Ring Fit Adventure, which, have both, which are both relatively new and both did really well. Uh, much, much, much better than ARMS ever did. Um, so as much as I, I genuinely love ARMS, I, it's, it's one of my favourite Switch games, but I just can't see Min Min returning. And it's not just be, uh, if it was Spring Man who they had added, I could see him returning. Because, you know, it would be like a Little Mac or, or, or an Olimar or a Captain Falcon, the face of a popular, if niche, franchise. But Min Min isn't the face of ARMS, and that's the big issue, really. Uh, Min Min is... Not it, it, Mimin is a character that anyone who has not played ARMS will not know. Um, uh, 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 apart from, of course, the fact that um, they, you know, she has been in Smash. But Min Min is a relatively, uh, not niche, but a, a more obscure character from what is already, and by the time Smash, the next Smash game comes out, a fairly obscure franchise. So I don't really see Min Min returning. Again, if it was Springman, he would have returned. If it was Springman, I could even have potentially seen Min Min being added. But, um, no, as it is, I, I just don't think that Min Min is going to return. So let's talk about some new Nintendo, some new first party franchises. Um, the first that I'm going to add is Isaac from Golden Sun. Um, now this, um, this completes, um, well, not doesn't complete, but... This is a character that is similar to Waluigi and Skull Kid, where I believe that he is one of the most historically requested characters in Smash. Um, he was a big deal, especially back in Smash 4 speculation. And the only reason he, and actually the same with Skull Kid, um, have not been more highly requested um, is probably because of the fact that they were deconfirmed as assist trophies. Um, you could say the same about Waluigi, but Waluigi was always just uh, another level. Um, but I think that Isaac is definitely a big, a big, a big character, and he is from a franchise that I think would be great to represent. I and I think it's a character that is going to get represented because uh, Sakurai seems to be always aware of the characters that are the most vocally talked about, and Isaac has definitely historically been one of them. Um, so I and I imagine he probably did very well on the on the um, on the ballot as well. Um, so I, I think that Isaac will definitely be added. Ring Fit Trainee and Ring is going to be the next character, and this is obviously from Ring Fit Adventure. If I had my way, this would not be the Ring Fit Trainee. This would be Drago, because Drago is just the most bizarre thing in any game I've seen. He's a He's a buff bodybuilding dragon, and it is glorious. And I like, I, I I just would absolutely love to see him in Smash. 
Um, he would definitely be up there as one of my most wanted characters. However, I don't see that as particularly likely. I do think the Ring Fit is going to continue as a franchise. I think it is just that popular that it is going to continue. Um, and because of that, I think Ring Fit will get a rep. Um, and that rep is going to be Ring Fit Trainee and Ring because, well, they are the main characters. Um, so I, I, I think that they, they they just make the most sense um, as, as, as a... Um, as a rep um, to bet the to best represent a ring fit adventure as well because of the fact that it, it you know using ring could represent um, the gameplay of ring fit in some way um, so I, I think that this is a fairly obvious addition I think ring fit is going to continue into the future I think it will still be a big deal when smash 6 comes along and so I think that we are going to get a rep from ring fit Tibby is the next character and um, you may be wondering who the heck Tibby is. Um, to answer your question, he is a um, he is a character from Rhythm Paradise, uh, Rhythm Heaven, uh, to you guys in the states. Um, he uh, specifically from Rhythm Paradise Mega Mix. Um, he is essentially the character, the main character of that game. He is uh, part of the main story campaign. Um, and the reason I think that Tibby will get in over um, someone like Karate Joe or the Chorus Kids or any number of Rhythm Paradise characters that I've seen suggested um, is because Tibby can just, just straight up represent all of their minigames. Uh, the Chorus Kids, uh, Karate Joe, uh, all of these characters, they, they're, they're really isolated inside their own minigames. Um... Uh, it wouldn't be impossible to represent other minigames with them, it would just feel a bit weird. Whereas Tibby, because he is essentially the connective tissue between multiple games, um, I think he would actually do a really good job of representing a lot of those different minigames um, in his moveset. Um, so I think that Tibby is a very underrated option um, as a character for, um, for Smash. It's exactly the kind of thing I think that Sakurai would do. Uh, people expect it to be the Chorus Kids or Karate Joe or, or, or again, those are the only two that come to mind. But they expect it to be one of those characters and it ends up being Tibby. That's actually kind of exactly what happened with, um, that's exactly what happened with Animal Crossing where Tom Nook was the character that people thought would be added. Uh, but in the end, it was actually Villager that was added. Um, and I think that that took... Uh, people by surprise a little bit because they thought if Animal Crossing got a character it would be Tom Nook but it wasn't, it was Villager um, and I, I, I think that this falls into that kind of category of a character that most people wouldn't think about but who would actually be the best fit really to represent the game um, and I do think that Riven Paradise is going to get a, a character um, Rhythm Paradise does not feel like a dead franchise. We haven't got a game for quite a while, but th th that doesn't mean we won't get one. I, I definitely do. We could get a couple before the next Smash game comes out. Uh, one on the Switch and one on the, on the next console. Um, that seems more than likely. Uh, so, because it feels like it's still an ongoing franchise and a relatively popular one, I definitely think it will get, a, uh, it will get representation and I think Tibby will be it. The last franchise that I think, um, or not even the last franchise, because this is based less on the franchise and more on the character. The last character I think will be added is Takamaru. Takamaru is from the mysterious Murasami Castle, um, a NES game. Quite, um, quite, uh, it's quite an old game. Um, and for that reason, you may think, why am I adding this? Well, it's because of the fact that we always get a retro rep. Uh, almost always. Ultimate didn't have one, but Ultimate was very much a, a different a different sort of game. Um, but we always get a character from a retro franchise. Um, and Takamaru seems like one of the most likely options. There are other options. Uh, people would say Excite Biker, for example. I think the Mac Rider would be just a superior option to that. I don't think either of them will be. Um, Balloon Fighter, potentially. Mm, not not super keen on that. Uh, well, I mean, I like the idea, actually. I'm a fan of the idea of Loon Fighter. I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, but Takamaru 
Um, not only does it is it probably one of the best char uh, retro characters that is of a certain caliber of uh, popularity that has a good move set potential, but um, Takamaru and the mysterious Murasami Castle have been referenced not, not super often, but relatively often. In not necessarily modern, but just generally, they've been referenced since um, their games released. Um, Takamaru, I believe, was um, a playable character in Samurai Warriors, which I genuinely didn't expect when I heard about that. Um, and as well as that, um, as well as that, um, Takamaru and the mysterious Murasami Castle did actually have a um, um, a game in Nintendo Land. Uh, which not very, not very many franchises got, um, and yeah, I think that that actually puts Takamaru in a very good position to be in Smash, especially seeing as he is also an assist trophy in Ultimate. Um, I think that this is definitely for our retro rep. I think this is the most likely option we have. I think it is a very, very likely option. This leaves off with the third-party characters. And I am going to be returning none of them. This is probably the most controversial change I'm going to be making. And I know it's one of the most controversial changes I'm going to be making. I don't care, I'm doing it. Um, again, this is not about desire. This is not necessarily what I want to see happen. Um, but the more I think about it, the, the more difficult it actually is to make a roster that has... Um, third party characters in it um, and that has what you would consider the quote unquote essential third party characters um, whilst also not being too big a roster um, and not cutting important Nintendo characters or characters that I think should not be cut um, I, I know that people don't want to see third party characters getting cut because that has been a focal point for Ultima. But the problem is the, the characters in the third party characters require additional negotiations to bring back. Um, some people say that maybe they already future proof that I highly doubt any company is going to allow Nintendo to just use their third party characters indefinitely, you know, forever into the future. I highly doubt any co company is that 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 lacks about their characters, um, and there are a lot of characters that I think would would be deserving of coming back. Um, Sonic, for example, definitely. Uh, Bayonetta, Bayo is such a big franchise for Nintendo at the moment that would make sense to keep around. Um, Pac-Man, Mega Man, they have very strong links with Nintendo and they are very big characters. Um, that the same goes for Ryu and Simon, uh, Banjo as well, and Sora. Uh, Sora was Sora and Banjo were massively requested characters. Sora was literally the most requested character in the ballot. And this is the issue. Every single one of those characters feels essential to bring back. And I don't, I don't know if any of them really are. The third parties aren't the focal point of, of Smash. Uh, at least they shouldn't be. This is a Nintendo brawler foremost it, it's 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 always been nintendo through and through uh well not through and through but it's always been very focused on nintendo uh, and ultimate's dlc is really the only time that that changed uh because that very much focused on third party characters but i think people take for granted the idea that that might be the norm when i don't think it is i think that they are going to want to strip this game back severely Cutting the third party characters has a lot of advantages. It reduces the roster, quite significantly really. Uh, it reduces the roster, but it does so in a way that is actually much more beneficial to Nintendo than cutting other characters. Because they don't have to pay the probably quite hefty sums to renegotiate rights for the characters to return. Um, it's, it's like, I mean you could cut, uh, who could you cut? You could cut Lucas from this roster maybe. But the thing is, Lucas is a character they can add, not for free, because obviously it takes time and work and effort and everything. But it doesn't incur an additional cost, whereas adding Sonic does. And then I think that's where it's going to. I think that's where they're going to. Their head's going to be at. Um, I 
don't think that they're going to bring back any third party characters because not only um, does it incur extra cost, they still have the opportunity to resell those characters as DLC and that just sounds like more of a modern Nintendo thing to do, honestly. To hold back on the third party characters and, you know, sell them later as DLC. I, I could even see it, and this is an idea that um, when I was talking to one of my friends, um, they could even do it where they um, they actually um, sell a bunch of the third party characters as a pack that you can buy, a DLC pack that you can buy um, on its own. That, again, sounds like a very Nintendo thing to do. Uh, I could definitely see that happening. So, there's a lot of reasons I think the third party characters are going to be dropped. Um, and this was a very recent change um, that I made to my script, uh, to my roster, uh, sorry. Um, and, uh, again, this was why I added um, Wolf and Palutena, and uh, actually, Ashley, a new Metroid character, um, and uh, I can't remember who the other character I added was. Uh, but yeah, um, those. Oh, oh, and Duck Hunt, sorry. Um, Palutena, Wolf, a new Metroid character, Duck Hunt, um, and Ashley. They were all characters that I added in because I had taken the third party characters I had originally planned um, out. Um, just for uh, the sake of full disclosure, those characters I had planned to add were uh, Sonic, Eggman, uh, Mega Man, Bomberman, and Pac-Man. Um, and in the end, I just kind of realised Bayonetta has to be there. Uh, and so does Sora, and so does Banjo. And in the end, I would just be bloating, bloating it too much with uh, characters that would be very expensive for Nintendo to maintain. Um, and... Uh, in the end, I just don't. Uh, I don't see it happening. I, I, no, I can see third-party characters returning, obviously. I could, but I can also very much see them being cut. And this actually kind of cycles back to why I wanted to make this a roster in the first place. I don't think people are willing to accept what this next Smash game has to be. I don't think people are ready to accept how much it has to be cut. Um. And I don't think people are ready to accept the kind of characters that are going to be that are going to be gone. And sure, uh, maybe the third-party characters will not be among that, but most of the third-party characters will. It is very unlikely the characters like Steve and Kazuya are going to return. Even someone like Banjo is potentially on thin ice. Um, and because of that, it just worries me that so many people are so caught up in what they want to see that when it comes to the actual game and when they see that they're not going to get all of these third party characters back and that so many characters they love are going to be cut it's going to be very toxic and we don't want another um, toxic smash speculation as I said I wasn't too bothered by it but a lot of people really do not want um, smash speculation to become toxic again but I think that if people go in into it with the mindset of we want all of these third party characters to return. And not even we want, we expect all of these third party characters to return. If people go in with that mindset, they will be disappointed. And uh, I think it is, I mean, I, I don't have a big audience, so I'm not gonna say that I am going to make some big change that will make everyone see things differently, no. But I at least want to try and present something that is more realistic, um, and even if it's not me or more realistic, definitely lives more in the realms of realism than most people seem to be willing to to, to accept. Um, even if you don't think that the third party characters are going to be cut, it's a possibility. Because of that extra cost it incurs, and because of the fact that it opens up opportunities for Nintendo to make more money. Um, so, I... I think it is important, and this is now I'm talking about the roster as a whole. I think even though that this is not going to be the actual roster, this, I have not got a sixth sense, I do not know everything, this is not going to be the roster. I think that as a prediction, this is probably not bad. Uh, because of the fact that I have been willing to make hard decisions. 
Um, and that is something that Sakurai is going to have to do. And this has, this whole process has made me appreciate him and the job that he has so much more. Because it has been very tough. I've had to cut characters I did not want to keep. Um, to cut, cut. I've had to keep characters I didn't want to keep. Um, and that's because there's just certain things I think will happen or... Yeah, I just I just can't see not happening or or it's very difficult to come into this and make a very realistic prediction. This is about the closest that I can I can get. And I don't think very many people are willing to accept that. I don't think very many people are willing to go as far as I have because I don't think many people think that's what's going to happen. But the game needs to be cut. Um, and I have... This roster um, has 60 characters. And I'm going to just flash it up on screen. I, I vis visually represented this. It has 60 characters. And that was a number that kind of came accidentally. I just kind of started listing the characters I thought in the beginning. Um, and uh, the characters I thought was, were going to be in the game. And it just kind of happened that... Um, it just kind of happened that um, 60 was the number I landed on. And that sounded perfect to me, actually, when I looked at it. Because it's a nice round number, but that's not the only reason. Um, it's also because it seems like that cuts enough characters whilst also leaving space for new characters. Um, and the roster isn't too big to be unmanageable. Um, balancing is very important. Um, it's very important to consider. And I think people who think that the next game could have 70, 80 characters haven't really considered that that's something you have to balance. And while Ultimate has been fairly well balanced, there's no guarantee the next game will be. And I don't think that they'll want to take the risk of that. They'll want to make sure that it is a very balanced game, or at least as balanced as they can possibly make it. Um, and because of that, um, I think 60 is essentially the upper limit. I think that's the most you could possibly have. Um, I think you could probably... It, it, there is a very good chance that we will get less characters than this. I don't think we're going to get more. But I stuck with 60 because I think that that is a, a, a good number. Um, it means that I have 44 um, returning characters, um, which is around about half of the characters, which, again, I was quite happy with that. Um, I think slashing it in half is... A very a, a very good way to go about it um, so I think yeah so it slashes the characters in half um, but it and it has 16 new characters and 16 is actually a fairly good number of newcomers as well um, I, I believe I don't have the numbers to hand at the moment but I believe smash Four might have had 15 characters, 15 new characters, and Brawl had 18 new characters, and I think Melee had somewhere in that range as well. Um, and I think that's actually um, that that puts 16 at a quite a a, a reasonable um, estimate um, of of what what a, amount of new characters could be. Um, especially because having cut en enough characters means that we have room for enough characters. Um, 60 characters also means that we, um, 60 characters also means that, it, well, it's, it's a bit more than Smash 4 had, um, but still significantly cut down from Ultima. Um, so I am very happy actually with this roster. Again, I know that this is not going to be perfect and exact, but I think it's a pretty good prediction. Personally, I think that. Um, and I think it's a realistic prediction. And I think it's more realistic than most people would be willing to go. Because most people will be too caught up in their own biases. Not to throw shade at anyone, but I think that most people, when considering this, would be far too caught up in their own biases. Um, and what they want, rather than what is actually particularly likely. So this um, roster was made, um, well, the final iteration of this roster was made directly after um, Sora was um, announced. Um, that's why I'm showing this roster off, because, I, I, again, I wanted it to be essentially um, the uh, um, a prediction from as early as it is possible to predict it, um, 
considering we can't really predict the next game when the previous game isn't finished. But now that the previous game is finished, my prediction feels fair game. Uh, it feels like it will be interesting to see how right I am, or uh, no, let's be honest, how wrong I am, um, based on, um, you know, based on what we know now that um, the, the most recent game has finished. Um, so th that's this was made just after Sora was announced. Um, however, this was just the most recent iteration of it. And I'm going to keep iterating on it, and I want to keep on altering it um, over the years, um, just to um, so that I can look back um, at how my opinion changes. However, this um, was this was definitely nowhere near the first iteration of this. It's gone through a lot of different changes. I've mentioned some of them, um, but I, I I just want to kind of quickly flash up um, the original version of this that. I posted this back on Reddit uh, way back. Um, this roster was made after uh, Min Min was uh, was announced. Um, so just before Steve, not not just before necessarily. I can't remember exactly what the time scale was, uh, but it was before Steve. Um, that's why Min Min is in this original one because she had been announced at the time. Um, I think it's interesting seeing some of the differences I have here. Um, there are a lot of them. Um, I, I've mentioned some of them, such as Catley, for example, um, who was originally there. Uh, oh wait, no, so she's not in this roster. Um, she was in a later one, actually. She, she was, um, I think, when I cut Spring Man and Min Min from this um, list, uh, that's when I added Callie and then later Marina. Um, uh, another um, interesting one that you might have noticed is Evie. Um, in the end, I just figured that Charizard was more likely. Um, I have Tails here. Tails was in there for quite a long time until I decided that Eggman just kind of worked better. Um, Professor Layton and Phoenix Wright. Um, I think that my bias was showing a little bit more with this one, uh, but they are they are very important to Nintendo's history, so they fit as Smash characters. Um, but I just don't see them as likely now. Um, obviously, I've already talked about Bomberman, um, and yeah, you can see a, a lot of the differences, and I. I, I, I look back at this and I don't necessarily think it's the greatest thing ever. I don't think it was a great prediction. Um, I look at my current one and I prefer it a lot more. Um, but obviously, I, I know that there are people that will prefer my original one. Uh, that's only natural. Um, but yeah, um, I just thought that was a, an interesting tidbit to add to the end of this video. Just to kind of see where my, my thought process has, has kind of changed and developed and evolved. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's all I wanted to say. This has been a long one. Um, it's been a very different one as well. I'm actually kind of glad I, I didn't go by my script because I, it would have taken me a lot longer to finish this. Um, I am going to continue with my Mario Kart series uh, very soon. Um, I, I've already um, done the script and recorded the audio for my next video. Um, so that will be coming. I haven't dropped that series. I, I want to... I want to keep at that and hopefully that will be coming relatively soon but I did want to, to drop this video uh, before you know it was too late to really be to really be talking about this as you know the last opportunity to speculate about Smash so um, I hope that you enjoyed it um, I enjoyed talking about it I, I always enjoy talking about this kind of stuff um, I am definitely looking forward to, to hearing other people's opinions about how wrong I am because yeah let's be honest I'm definitely gonna catch a lot of flack for this um, but I, I would be very interested to see what changes other people would make uh, based on what they see as likely rather than what they want obviously because again that's how I've approached this uh, but I, I definitely look forward to hearing what other people think because um, I the whole reason that I make these videos is because I want to you know, I like I like discussing things. Like I discussion discussion is nothing without other people. To just, you know, other people's opinions. So I would love to hear other people's um, thoughts about this. And I'm rambling. I should probably stop rambling. This is why I always script my videos. Uh, I will see you guys in the next video.